outside, so we're going to let them do the thing. We're going to go ahead and start. Um, all the Red Deer guys, um, for those of you that don't know who I am, I'm the general sales manager at Subaru Calgary. And uh, a lot of my, my training and the, and the stuff I, I talk about and use is, is based a lot off, well, almost everything off, off Andy. What Andy brings to the car business um, is passion, right? Everybody uses lines, but Andy, Andy's got passion. Andy sent me a text last night, sent me a text this morning. He's very engaged. He's, uh, he's probably the king of rapport and energy. So it's, we're, we're super, super lucky to have him here. Um, any questions we're going to save to the end? Andy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And listen, hey, here, here's what I'll talk about. Look, everybody, just number one, like, you can talk openly. You need something? Just say, what's up, man? Let's do it. I mean, here's the deal. I, it's not about me. It, it has nothing to do with me. It has to do with you guys. That's the bottom line, okay? What I, what I live for is have an extraordinary impact on, on salespeople. Whether you're a manager, you're a GM, you're a salesperson, I don't care who you are. It doesn't matter. Everybody has the ability in this life to literally become more skilled than they ever imagined. But you have to put the work in because it won't happen by accident. I'm just gonna share with you. If you wanna become one of the best closers in the world, when we talk about meet and greet, hey, when we go to meet a customer, what do we wanna have? We wanna have extraordinary impact, right? I mean, think about this. How many dealerships does a customer go through and honestly, maybe never get treated like a million bucks, but when they meet you, if you I always think about, you guys have Starbucks in Canada, right? I mean. They're everywhere. Well, I always think about it. If I was in, in a Starbucks and I was standing outside and I was taking surveys and I was like, hey, uh, tell me what you think about car salespeople. Could you imagine the things that people would have to say about car salesmen? They're thieves, they're robbers, they're this, they're that, whatever. But let me ask you this. If you took a survey after they met you, what would they say? That's what I care about. I'm going to tell you this, training gives you the unfair advantage. I would tell everybody right now, I don't care where you're at, it matters where you're going. I don't care who you are today, it matters who you're becoming. And I'm going to share this with you, okay? Some of you guys, and obviously everybody's time is really valuable. Um, there's one thing that you can never get more of, that's time. So I appreciate all of you guys, I'm grateful for it. And I, and I, and I use my time to be with you guys. If I can change somebody's life, I was, and when I say this, I was at 18, I had nothing, I'm 40 years old now. Everybody told me I wasn't gonna make it, they labeled me. You know what? People have a great way of trying to pull you down and not let you ever play all your music out like Zig Ziglar used to say. Not ever give your best. You go to the grave without giving your very best. I'm gonna tell you, some of you guys right now, you can be making triple your income in your dealership, triple. Your dealers can be tripling their bottom line. But if you don't buy into yourself, you have to be your own biggest fan. Look, I'm gonna tell you this, I bet on me every single day, but you get out of something what you put into it. I'm gonna think about this. Hey, if you're married right now, if you're not married, awesome. But if you're married, I'm gonna tell you this, will you have a great marriage if you don't put stuff into your marriage? No ways, man. If you don't treat your wife like a queen, you think she's gonna act like a queen? No ways. You think you're gonna become the top salesperson in the country if you don't buckle down and invest in yourself constantly? You are an investment. And I'm gonna tell you, as I say this, um, there's lots of things that we could train and talk about, but the difference between where you are today and where you're going tomorrow, in most cases, is either your mindset or it's the gap in your skill set. Skill acquisition, those two words are everything. I'm gonna tell you this, people fear what they don't know including me. If I don't know something, I don't, I'm not competent in it. I don't feel, I don't feel confident, right? Everybody that's in sales has the ability to have bulletproof confidence. If you had bulletproof confidence, every time somebody walked in your dealership, you would sell everybody you talk to. The first sale that you ever make in this business is selling yourself that you're going to sell the next customer that you talk to. Am I right or wrong? When you pick up the phone, it's like ring, ring. It's like, Hey, this is Andy. Hope you're having a great day. What's up? It's like family. You love these people, have massive impact on them. Most people don't. Customers can tell if you're sitting down or if you're standing up or if you're selling cars or if you're not. Just literally by the way that your, your mind is and your attitude, it shines through. So I always say have extraordinary impact on the customer. And I don't think that we do it enough. And I'm going to tell you why, because I think that we get used to doing our job. But I'm going to share something with you. Everything that you want in life is right on the other side of being uncomfortable. I want to ask you this.
when's the last time you got uncomfortable for real i don't care if you're the owner the gm the salesperson or the lot porter when's the last time you put yourself under rapid fire in an uncomfortable position most people veer away from it. look i'm going to tell you this if you pushed yourself you would be blown away Jim Rohn always talks about it's not who you are today, it's who you're becoming that matters. Dude, I would tell you guys, buckle down, take an hour a day of training, and guess what? Work on your strengths for 30 minutes. What you're great at. I mean, I'm great at negotiations and closing and overcoming objections. Why? Because it used to scare the piss out of me. It was the one thing I was scared of. Somebody would say, hey, I got three more cars to look at. I'm going to get back with you. I appreciate you. And then guess what? I was like, damn, man, uh, you know, why don't you like the car? And I was like, dude, that's not what I wanted to say. You know, and guess what? I lost a sell. And at the end of the month, I don't know, I lost two sales a week like that. I'm selling 10 cars. Oh, I lost eight. I could have been an 18 car hand, but I'm a 10 car hand. All I'm going to tell you guys is you could triple your sales right now. I could take any guy. It doesn't, even an owner has to still train himself. Why? Because leadership goes into everything, but I'm going to tell you this, where you're focused, I always say where you're focused on is where your energy goes. And wanting to sell more cars, it's, it's one of those deals that it's, it's not a, there's no silver bullet and it's not a magic trick. You have to elevate your game. You have to get better. There are salespeople in every dealership around you guys. And I'm going to tell you, the difference in a dealership now being successful and not being successful are the people inside of them. It, look, Subaru, one of the best brands in the world. Customer loyalty, what is it, like 80-something percent? It's freaking wicked. And I'm not a Subaru guy, so I'm not giving you the stats on Subaru, but I know people that buy Subarus go back to buy another Subaru. I just know it. That's what they do. But no matter what store you're in, I'm going to tell you, it all has to do with the person that's selling the car because the car don't mean nothing, okay? It's the person that's in front of it. And I want to share with you guys, look, there's a level you're probably playing at right now. Just ask yourself this question. You don't have to answer it out loud, but look. Watch this. So, uh, Kyle, is that you, Kyle? Yeah. Cool. Always love remembering names, man. You always got to say the name over and over to remember it. We talked about build rapport. I never forget a name. Kyle, I'm going to ask you a question. Do you believe that you have the potential to make more money? Yes or no? Yeah. Why aren't you? Um, I'm not putting you on the spot. I just want you to be honest with me. This is a good time to tell me why aren't you? A little bit of self-doubt and knowledge in, in the car game. I've only been in it for just over a year and a half. Training would change your life. Change your life 360. And I want to tell you something. Just by asking the, the first thing, I'm going to tell you this. Competence creates confidence. And if you give Kyle bulletproof confidence, he's going to triple his sales. That's it. It's just how it's going to happen. Look, there's no magic trick. There's no special, you know, like I said, silver bullet to this. It's not carrying the right brand. Sure, brand is great. But I don't care if you launch out the nicest Subaru in the country. You put a salesman that doesn't know how to get somebody to say yes and feel comfortable to spend their money with them, that car's going to sit on the lot. It ain't going nowhere. I want to tell you guys, look, do me a favor. Bet on you. Look at yourself as an investment. I want to ask you a question. And I mean this. How much time today? Are you spending on yourself with self-improvement? How much time? And look, you can tell your buddy you're putting in 30 minutes. Screw your buddy. I want you to think about this for yourself. You are your own investment. At the end of the day, you know, your buddies don't deposit money in your bank. You do. You work for the dealer. You invest in you. Every single one of you could be the next record breaker in Canada with the sales record making the most money. Every single one of you. I don't care who's labeled you in life who told you you couldn't make it, who did, doesn't believe in you, screw them. Audit your circle, man. Get rid of anybody and everybody in your way. Now is the time. We are in the era of the worst salesman I've ever seen in my entire life. And that isn't me being negative. That's me being honest. And do you know why? Because we're not investing in ourselves and we're not obsessed with it. We're not freaking ate up with it anymore. I eat skill for breakfast. Why? Because if I don't, I can't take care of my family. And I know this, they're walking through car dealerships. They're getting on the phone with different people. And these people that don't care, they stand out. It's the new norm. Guess what? You start investing in yourself. You'll see that you got a little bit more of a smile. 
Your eyes change. Your smile changes. The way you talk changes. Your believability changes. And just like I asked Kyle a second ago, I said, Kyle, do you believe you have the ability to make more money? Yes or no? Kyle says, yes. I said, why aren't you? Every morning you have to ask yourself that question. What are my holes in my skill set? What am I weak at? And guess what? If you took an hour of training each day and you say, Andy, an hour. Listen, if you don't give the hour now, you have to pay the price in advance. Because if you don't pay the price in advance, you're never going to get what you want. You're always going to be wishing. Success doesn't happen by hope. It comes by being obsessed with it. And I'm going to tell you, and we'll, we'll go into this last little part and let's, let's maybe some talk about some stuff that y'all guys want to talk about. But if you don't become obsessed with progress, and I mean progress in general, getting healthier, being a better parent, being a, you know, a great in your marriage, being better at your job. I mean, I don't know, maybe, maybe you're a Christian, you have faith or whatever your religion is. Guys, what... Progress is so addictive. It's so amazing. It makes you feel alive. I see people that are like dead morgues walking around. Like they're just waiting for something to happen. Bro, it ain't gonna happen. Nothing's gonna happen unless you make it happen. Okay? There's excuse makers, right? And then there's people that find a way and make things happen. And I'm gonna tell you, if you ever find yourself, so we have a rule in this conference room, right? So I have a conference room right here. It's in Norman, Oklahoma. I have a rule. I got a guy named Sean Pollard over here. He's one of my trainers. Sean, say what's up. What's up guys? You can't see him, but listen, if Sean says something negative, he gets down and does 20 push-ups. Anything. Anything at all. If he says, Man, I talked to this guy, I couldn't close him. Get down. Let's go. Don't listen. Don't even go into an excuse. I don't want to hear it. Pay the rent. And guess what? I love being in the suck zone. When I play on the role play app, I've got a role play app that goes over all these objections, rapid fire and roll. And when I play on it, look, it's uncomfortable, man. I'm challenging myself. I'm working the crap out of my brain. But guess what happens? It gets me so sharp. It's insane. We do these master closer seminars in, in, in person. I've got guys that have been in the business for 10 years that I say, hey, man, you know, this is my first stop. I've got three more cars to look at. Hey, I appreciate you. You're awesome. But guess what? We're going to look at two more cars. We're going to get back with you. Hey, I'm on the phone. Guess what? I appreciate you giving me your best price, but I don't think that that's a good enough deal to earn my business. I'm going to keep shopping. Thank you. And you know what they do? They just lock up. They don't know what to say. I'm like, bro, people are going to give you these objections every day for the rest of your life. Are you going to never know what to say and you're never going to change? Or are you going to train like no other and you're going to crush these obstacles in front of you? If there's a wall, you either run through it or run around it. I'm going through it. I just want to tell you guys, if you knew what you were capable of, every one of you in that room, every single one of you, you would blow your mind. You wouldn't even know what to do. When you go to work, you trade your time for money. And a lot of the times when we go to work, we forget about that. How much money are you worth an hour? Think about this. Take how much you make and figure out how much you're worth an hour. And then I want you to think about how much you could be worth an hour. You know why we got in this business? Because it's the best business in the world. Never forget that. The money that this business offers and the lifestyle, everything you could imagine for someone who is serious about this business is insane. But if you don't train, you'll never take care of it. Hey, you can marry the best girl in the world. Guess what? If you don't show her massive attention, she's not always going to be in love with you. This is the way it goes. You can have the best good looking kids in the world and they're healthy as, healthy as heck, but guess what? If you don't show massive love as a dad and go spend time with them, you're not gonna be the best dad. I don't care how great your kids are. You have the best job in the world. You don't invest in yourself and become obsessed with becoming great in it. Guess what? It's gonna be an average job. And that's why I would tell you, I call it the one percenter. If you don't do what the one percent will do, which is basically become obsessed and immerse. It's your obligation, your duty. It's, it's your life to take care of your family, to change your family tree if you're not where you want to be. Hey, you have the ability to change your life starting right this minute. If you don't have the life you want right now, okay, cool. Guess what? Screw it. We're going to complain about it. We're going to cry or we're going to change it. Look, when stuff doesn't go my way, I know how to fix it. So with that being said, I just want to tell you guys, you guys all have the potential to triple your income. All you have to do is raise your hand and ask for help. Say, so, hey, man, I'm all in. And guess what? By the way, it comes with sacrifice. Nobody gets anything in life without sacrifice. It doesn't happen. So if you're not willing to sacrifice time, be 
people want more time and money, right? But they don't want to give up time and money. You want more time, but you don't give up any time. You don't want to train for 30 minutes in the morning, but you want to make more money. See, your actions are everything. Your words are cheap. What's seen in public is usually practiced in private. Am I right? When, I mean, I'm just saying, it's the truth. When you see a salesman killing it, guess what? He's usually doing something behind the scenes that you haven't seen. You don't have to tell people what you're doing, but you do have to raise your hand and bet on you. Um, what do you guys think, man? Did you guys got some questions? I kind of talked about some, some basic things that like, I don't know, us as salespeople, we have the best job in the world. In the world. This business is insane. What do you think, I, Paul? I, I agree with you. I think one of the, one of the things that we, everybody worries about is uh, closing right away. And they don't worry about like the first step, which is like the meet and greet. And we just kind of put that aside. What, uh, what is, what's your, well, I know what your meet and greet, how your meet and greet is. I have it pretty much memorized, but uh, for everybody else here, like how do you go about your meet and greet? Well, so when I do a meet and greet, number one, so if we're talking about in person, the first thing that I do, people pull up in front of a vehicle, right? I mean, they have a vehicle they're in, right? What I do is I, I, I stay in front of their vehicle. Number one, I shake everybody's hand. Look, guys, you see my eyes? You see my face? See my smile? When I go out, I show people that I'm in a great mood. I'm a great person to deal with. And I'm going to tell you this. People will be more apt. They're thir I call it the 31% rule. Your brain, right, it's 31% better to make a decision to say yes if it's in a good mood. So what's the first thing that I do? I make peer people mirror me. Watch this. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Andy. Welcome to the store, man. What brought you in? Who are you here to see? You know, and I just say hi, right? Hey, how can I serve you? How about changing your words up just a tad? Okay, build the best friend in two minutes. You go to Chick Fil A. What's the first thing they do? They don't say, "What do you want to eat?" They say, "How can how how can, how can I serve you?" When they say serve, I'm like, "They I just say serve," and that's a that's a that's a that's a humble word. A servant always gets respect. So guess what? Lead with servant leadership. Hey, guys, how you doing? My name's Andy. How can I serve you guys today? Uh, yeah, we were just looking at the car we saw on the internet. Awesome, man. So where'd you guys drive from? Get ready to make a best friend. I'm going to tell you this. I call it the two-minute best friend. If you can't make a best friend in two minutes, I'm going to tell you this. People buy from people that remind them of their friends, and people buy from people that they like. People love familiarity. Go ahead. So I just want everybody to write that down. Uh, it's obviously a line that I, I use a lot, right? People want to buy from people remind them of their friends mm -hmm. right everybody wants a friend in the car business yes and it right. doesn't and no and paul you're right and it doesn't matter what you like just so i can lay this down if you're a, a servant person and you want to help people by the way if you don't love people get out of this business i'm just i'm just gonna tell you it ain't gonna work it, it, i'm just gonna tell you like the money doesn't come if you don't love people like it doesn't matter and by the way i don't even think about money when i sold Look, my last year selling cars, I made 715 grand selling cars. You know what? I didn't even look at my check. Do you know why? Listen, do you know why? Because money doesn't matter. It's like a Nintendo game. I'm just adding points, baby. And you know what? My points come from my customers. My customers were so in love with me, okay? Why? And this isn't out of arrogance or cockiness. So please, don't take that. I am not an arrogant person, but I'm a very confident person. And every one of you in, the, in every room around us has to be confident. You have to have believability. Do you think people want to buy from somebody that they can't see that believes in the product or believes in the company that they're in or the place that they're in or the job that they do? No ways. If somebody knows what they're doing, I want to wait from them. I'm about to spend some money. So guess what? Believability in yourself is everything. So never mistake that by saying, hey, I don't want to be, you know, I'm humble as they get. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just telling you guys, when we're going back to uh, the meet and greet, how does that go? Be humble, be loving, smile with your eyes. Look, you guys have the ability to do something that's amazing. You have the ability to massively impact somebody who doesn't believe in a car salesperson, who's had a bad experience. Don't you think most of the people you talk to have probably had a bad experience with the salesman before? Yeah. Okay. That's great. Yes. Thank you. You know why? Because when I show up, they're going to flip out. You know what? That's every one of you guys. When you go outside, you're not the first person they ever met. Listen, they've gotten treated bad before. Somebody didn't love on them before. Somebody didn't show them that they cared about them before. And then you came along. You changed all that. You, people don't care about how much you know until they know how much you care. They do not know about 
this or that or this, but they know whether you care about them or not. Okay, people make decisions with their brain, logically, they make, thing, make, make decisions with their gut. And in their first two minutes, it's a gut feeling. People know whether they're in the right place or they're in the wrong place. You are the ones that make that decision. You come out and people, man, man, and when I say this, man, I know it's social distancing right now, coronavirus and all that. I, I hug my customers all the time. And people be like, man, did you just give that guy a hug? He's like 6'10". I said, hell yeah, I hugged that guy. I was giving his kids piggyback rides around the lot. You know why? Because it doesn't matter because I'm family. And by the way, the word I, I want you to write down is familiarity. People need to be familiar with you very fast. Have you ever met somebody and you don't know them, but you feel like you've known them for a long time? That's you. Bro, you just met a salesman. You're so long for the ride now. That's it. That's how beautiful life works with the salesperson. Look, there's character and there's charisma. Character is who you really are. And the charisma is like the magic trick that you put the show on when you're with them. It's your, show, it's your showsmanship. Have charisma. And by the way, if you're a great person, I know tons of great guys in the car business. They're unbelievable. They have great hearts. They want to take great care of people. But they have no charisma. Charisma is teachable. Okay? You have to do it by doing what? Learn a word track. Go in front of the mirror and look at yourself. And you say, man, this is stupid. It's stupid that you're not doing it. That's what's stupid. Your last check was stupid. Okay? And I'm just, and I mean it when I say this. Put yourself on video. You say, well, I don't video myself. Hey, everything you want is on the other side of being uncomfortable. Nothing good comes from a comfortable environment. Nada. Nothing good comes. If you're comfortable right now, guess what? Get uncomfortable. If you're broke right now, it's probably because you're comfortable. Here's what I'll tell you. Get uncomfortable. Push yourself. You don't even know what you're capable of. It's insane. But guess what? Because you don't like videoing yourself, you think it's silly. Guess what? I made a lot of money by being pretty silly, okay? And you guys can do the same thing. I'm no different than you, Not, nothing. There's no difference between me and you, nothing. And as I talk to you guys, I feel rich already, whether I didn't have a dollar or, or nothing. Here, I don't need to make a sale to be happy. I, I come from a place of gratitude every day that I'm capable, that I'm alive. And that right there allows me to go out and you know, if I don't sell somebody, it's my fault. You know, sell or be sold. They're either selling you on a reason why they're going to leave or you're selling them on a reason why they're going to stay and buy. It's, it's, it's real simple. I don't, there's no gray area. Unless your manager says, this guy can't buy a car. This guy can't buy a car. Then I'm still like, well, damn, man, I can pull a cosigner, right? You know, then I, I'm going back into the sale again. I'm not getting out of it. No, look, be like Alcatraz. Alcatraz, no one escapes. No one. And guess what? By the way, if you don't become a great salesperson, you're actually doing your customers a dissatisfaction. I'm just telling you. These people want to spend their money. Am I right? Yeah, or you wouldn't be seeing them. They wouldn't be on the phone with you if they didn't want to buy something. But because you haven't elevated your game and your skill set, guess what? You're making them go buy from someone else that really don't care about them. Because that guy don't love them, he's better at selling than you. Shame on you, man. Fix that. All the things that we're talking about are all fixable. That's what's so cool. You find holes in your game, it's bleeding out money, you stop it. You plug it, you fix it, but you have to work on it with skill. And the only way to acquire skill is repetition. You have to do it over and over and over until and, and forever. And by the way, even I talked to Paul, Paul, Paul does the training. Paul, even if you don't practice on something, two months later, You'll forget it. It's just the way it goes. You have to keep it in front of you. Guys, I train for a living. And guess what? If I don't do something, I, I just get dull at it. It's the way it goes. That's the why you, why you have to become obsessed with it. And you have to sacrifice X amount of time each day. Time spent in the dealership doesn't matter. There's 60 minutes in an hour. How you work 60 minutes in that hour is all that matters. Okay? You got 30 minutes, man. You got 30 minutes. So, uh, so what, do you, what do you think, Paul? What else you want to talk about? Whatever you got. Uh, uh, sorry, we can't see. Uh, let's start with uh, Red Deer. Anybody there have a question they want to go over? It can be objections. It can be closing. It could be how does Andy have perfect teeth? Let's... <laughs> hey, I, listen, I didn't always have perfect teeth, okay? 
I, I literally tell you this. I got so I got veneers right here in the front. Yeah. Right. And I'm and well, I'm gonna tell you because I'm not perfect, dude. I'm I'm screwed up just like every one of you. Okay. <laughs> but you know the cool thing is, listen, I grinded my teeth as a kid to death. I met a wife, she's amazing, and she said, dude, we gotta get your teeth fixed, bro. <laughs> yeah, and my nose is broken because I fought all, all the time as a kid to maybe go to certain get my nose fixed. I mean, not not because my nose was messed up, because it was so broken, it was insane. And she made me go to Mexico and do it. And that was crazy. Craziest thing I ever did in my life. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so and yeah, let's let, let, let start oh, with oh, Red Deer. Oh, oh. Start with Red Deer. Say that again. Tom from right here. The one on the tail I'm sorry. Tom, the computer. Yeah, it's. I'll. I'll speak for Tom. What's your question, Tom? I just want to ask how you build that kind of familiarity that you're talking about. His 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 question is more phone skill related. Um, about trying to build that familiarity um, over the phone. Yeah, so it's the same deal. It's the same deal except for, look, look, so, so here, so your phone skills, there's a couple things that are real important. Num number one, um, your words. Your words are important. And I'm going to tell you this. The way I treat the phone is it's kind of like a funnel. When the sale comes in, are you talking to a customer that's at the top of the buying funnel, right? Like they just started and they're open to different options. Are you talking to a person that's been shopping, right? And like they're getting close to making a decision or are you talking to somebody that literally is about to make a decision immediately and they have selected a car that they want and they're ready to buy now. So I always keep them in the funnel and I figure out who I'm talking with, but I would say it's the same thing. It's like, it's like, and I, I role play with people. I say like ring ring and they're like, Hey, I, this is Andy. I hope you have a wonderful day. How can I help you? And they're like, yeah, I was calling about that, uh, you know, the Chevy Camaro 2014 I saw on the internet. I'm like, oh, man, that's a great car. Yeah, I've had a lot of calls on it. Um, I apologize. I'm actually uploading my computer right now. So I'm going to check the availability on that. Um, where are you calling from today? And they're like, oh, I'm calling from Calgary. And you're like, awesome. We do, we do like 90% of our business in Calgary. Where did you see the ad at? Oh, I saw it here. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's one of our best sites. Now, have you driven one of these cars? And they just start opening up. Listen. People love to hear themselves talk. So you do 20% of the talking, but when you ask great questions, get great answers. Ask great questions like, so, so have you driven a Camaro? And they just start yapping. They'll start going on. And that will allow the rapport to start building. And say, that's awesome, man. That's cool. So I apologize. It looks like I'm almost here. I'm checking the availability on that. I'm going to tell you, it shows that I have a couple actually in inventory. Would you mind if I got your information on all of them? Or is it just this specific one that you want? And guess what? What I'm doing is that I'm checking to see where they're at in the buying funnel now. The top, the middle, or the bottom. See how flexible my customer is. It's important for you as a salesperson to know so you can help your customer. Maybe they don't even need that car. And all of a sudden, I've attached myself to that car and I'm screwing myself. But at the end of the day, ask questions. They'll answer. Let them talk. Watch this. One, one of the most important, one of the best words you can always say, so, so tell me about that. Oh, yeah, so I went and drove one and down. Okay, so tell me about that. And I just let him start talking. And guess what? I'm like, cool, man, obviously it wasn't the right car or else you would have been calling me right now, right? So I love it, man. Um, what I'm going to do is, number one, my computer's back up. It does look like this vehicle is still available. Um, I'd love to go touch the vehicle, smell it, drive it, check it out, make sure it's perfect for you. But from the pictures that I've seen and I saw it this morning, I think you're going to fall in love with this car. But are you replacing anything? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, how long have you been in the market? What brought you into the market? You know, and then I'll go into figuring out whether I need to set an appointment right then or whether I need to get a little more information and set an appointment. Bottom line is, I'm going to treat them different than anyone else did at any other store. And I know how these BDC departments, internet departments work, and most salespeople. All they care about is the appointment, and they never build rapport over the phone. So since they don't build rapport, they either get one, no appointment set, or two, they get a fake appointment set and nobody's really showing it. Don't get off the phone until the customer falls in love with you. But I would tell you, there's no difference. And by the way, whoever, whoever, whoever it was that said, um, how do I get you know, like great on the phone? How do I get better on the phone? Listen, I've got tons of phone sales training videos. I'm, just, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna read out my number real quick. And if you text me and tell me what you need, 
I will throw you back some free sales training videos. I'll just text them to you. Hey, you're like, Andy, phone skill. I'm like, boom, 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 boom. Um, I'll shoot them to you. My cell phone is 918-210-0254. So 918-210-0254. You can hit me up on WhatsApp. Um, you can hit me up just on my cell phone. It, it doesn't matter. But if you just tell me what you want training on, I'll, I'll throw it to you. But so that guy that wants help on the phone, dude, I got you, man. I, I got hours of videos I can send you that you want. And that will help yeah, you. Yeah, I think like anybody here that's ever come into my office, they see my, my laptop on my desk and there's a YouTube video playing. Guess who that guy is? It's Andy, Not right? Him. In the background. Now to Tom's question about on the phone, um, Andy, how important is, uh, is I don't want to say cold calling per se, but calling your existing clientele. Gosh, or, or it's, 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 it's everything. So, 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 so number one, let, let me give you some little tricks and tactics that I did. And, I, and that really it's just work ethic, but I, how I work differently. Number one, every single car that I sold, every car that I sold, the entire time I was selling, um, I had these little stickers that were made. They're stickers. And they say, Andy Elliott, here for anything you need. And it had my cell phone number on it. And every car that I sold, I went out and I put that sticker in the gas cap. Every single car. Why? Everybody gets gas every week. Am I right? Big Daddy's right there. You know, I'm getting gas. There's that salesman again, right there in my damn gas cap. But they never peel the sticker off because it's inside the gas cap. Okay? And I just put it right there inside the gas lid when you pop it open. I would always find a place to put my sticker and I would tell my customers, I'd say, hey, listen, anything you need, I'm going to give you a business card. I'm going to give you my cell phone. I'm going to tell you I'm inside your gas cap. So anytime you need to get a hold of me, when you get gas, just call me. I got you. And also, I don't know if it's okay to get referrals in your state and pay for them or in, in, in okay. So, so in some states it's illegal, some states it's not because they call it bird dogging, whatever. Um, yeah. I had a deal that said Andy Elliott and it says $200 referrals, get your money today. And it had my cell phone. And I would tell people every time you go to get gas, you want to pay for your gas for the rest of your life. All you gotta do is send me a customer. Anytime that you hear somebody say the word car, guess what? You're getting gas every week. You're never going to forget me. And I stayed in front of them that way. That was my best way. Those stickers made me a lot of money. I'd recommend everybody. You can go to one, two, three stick, or I think it's stickers, one, two, three, or one, two, three stickers. And I used to, that's, that's what I ordered. And guys, I could get like 300 stickers for like 20 bucks. You know, I mean, that's, I mean, it's, so some people that's a whole years of delivery for 20 bucks. And you put the sticker in the gas cap, you can give them all the business cards you want. They're going to throw them away. I'm just going to tell you, you can give them all the cell phone numbers you want. People, you know, they, they're not going to save them in their phone. And I'm not saying that in a bad way, but people won't do that. They're not going to take that sticker. I know they won't. So you said, how, how important is it? Oh my gosh, it's so important, man. Um, so I used to stay up, and then listen, people don't believe in handwriting letters anymore to people because they think it's outdated. Look, people haven't changed. People have a heart. They love to feel, what does everybody want in this world? What's the one thing that everybody wants? They want to feel significant. They want to feel like they're important. That's it. And salespeople usually only call customers if they're going to pay them money. That's it. We never make them feel significant. So what I did is that I would send them text messages. And guys, and guys by the way, I'm a big video guy. Um, and I wasn't, and I don't love video. I'm actually an introvert, but I'm an extrovert because we have to be. And I've fallen in love with that side, but I was an introvert as I started. And I want to tell you, I take 15 second videos. And it's a, it's a generic video made for everybody. It would be like me set up saying, hey, it's Andy down here, it's, you know, Calgary Subaru. I just want to check in on you, make sure your vehicle's doing great. Number one, I want to tell you you're important to me. I appreciate you. I've never forgot you. Anything you need, anything, shoot me a text message, call me. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless. Whatever it is you want to say. Guess what? I will send that video. I'll go through my list and I'll start popping that video to everybody's cell phone. Boom, 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 boom. And I just start sending them out. And people get a chance to see my face again. That's so important, man. I'm just going to tell you, your people, when they've dealt with you, they know who you are. They remember you. Text messages are great. Picking up the phone is awesome. But most of the time, they won't answer. And I'm not saying you shouldn't call. But I'm saying that you should call. All right, Paul, don't answer. Cool, I shoot Paul a text. Hey, Paul, I just want to check on you, see how you're doing. Let you know I'm grateful for you. I hope you have an amazing day. Andy, Subaru Calgary. Guess what? You're getting a video next. Video's coming. 
And guess what? I just go down my list. Um, I don't know, pick 30 people a day, pick 50 people a day. Once you make the video one time, it's there. 30 people. So 30 to 50 phone calls is usually what you do in order yeah. to be successful, right? Yeah, yeah, because because prospecting is big to me. So I want to share with you that um, I, not, not to discourage cold calling. Listen, so there's there's a lot of things that I, and I'll, I'll try to give you guys a couple ideas. If anybody's sitting there today saying, hey, Andy, how can I find a customer today? How, how can I do it? Number one, you're all in different stores. Does any of the stores Oh, to subprime or so you cut out there. Can you repeat that? Um, do, do all the stores have great credit only, or do, do, do some of the stores have subprime? Uh, all of our stores in Alberta, we have some subprime to some level. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Listen, would you agree? Credit is only as good as the way you pay your bills today. Yeah. You have great credit today. You don't pay your bills tomorrow. You got bad credit. If you got average credit, but you pay your bills today in a year, year and a half, you can have good credit. This is the way it goes. Better credit you have, better rates you get, better things you qualify for. What I would do, I would go, I don't know if you guys use like auto alert or if you guys have your own systems. I mean, there's all these systems. I would recommend going in today and saying, all right, um, go to your GM, go to your internet manager, you know, whoever, however you handle it in your store and say, all right, Paul, here's what I need. And I would like to ask this from you. If I worked in your store, this is what I'd do right now. I'd say, can I get a list of everybody who purchased a car a year and a half ago that got 12% or higher in interest rate, okay? Every single person. And I want to call them today, and I'm going to tell them that, look, I, hey, hey, it's Andy down here at uh, Subaru Calgary. I just want to call, reach out, tell you, hey, we appreciate you, you know, for your business. We hope you and your family are safe. But but real importantly, um, on your last auto loan, you got 12% or higher in an interest rate. My question to you is, if you've paid everything on time with the, all the incentives that they're giving out to car buyers right now because of the coronavirus and everything, a lot of people just like you are actually re upgrading and retrading in their cars and getting way lower rates. Right now is the time and there's a niche for people just like you. Would it offend you? I'd ask Paul, would it offend you if I could cut your interest rate in half? What's Paul going to say? No? Hell no. I'll say, I'll say, awesome, Paul. Listen, would you mind if I got some preliminary stuff done over the phone so I could call you back and kind of paint a picture of what this would look like for you? I'm not asking you to make a commitment, but would you mind if I showed you a proposal, what I'm talking about? Of course. Awesome. Of course. Guess what? Cool, Paul. Listen, I'm going to send you a credit application. Let's go ahead and get your new information so I can dial in a new rate. And all I'm doing is that now I'm going to the desk with Paul with the credit app. And Paul's like, hey, dude. Yeah. Get them in. This guy's better. I mean, listen, if they could get 10%, that's better. Bottom line is it gives the people a reason and an excuse why they should come in. And right now, uh, lending is pretty loose all over. I mean, banks are wanting this business. So guess what? Now is the time to call those people. So that would be number one, would be the high interest rate list. Okay. And, and you might choose 10% and over, okay, uh, for the last year and a half and call every one of them. Second would be equity mining. Equity mining means this. Um, so I would go to Paul and I would say, hey, Paul, uh, could you please get me a list of all the people that have bought a car two years ago that, I, do you guys have tools that tell you who has equity and who doesn't? Uh, for our lease and finance customers, yeah. We do. Awesome, awesome, okay. So I would ask Paul, Paul, could you get me an equity list, please? Anybody that's bought a car in the last two years, that we believe that our tool shows that they have even a dollar of equity or break even. And what I would do, I'd say, hey guys, it's Sandy down here, Subaru Calgary. Look, right now, because of like all the auctions being closed because of the coronavirus and everything, we're having a really hard time to get our hands on some pre-owned cars. And our GM is actually telling us that he's gonna pay more money than he ever has paid for pre-owned vehicles. And I just got done reviewing your account and you have a lot of equity in your car. I want to ask you a question. Would you like to know how much equity you have? Watch this. Paul, would you like to know how much equity you have in your car? Yes. I'm not, asking, I'm not asking you to buy something. Don't ask people to buy something. But just tell them, would you like to know how much equity you have in your car? Who's going to say no? Hell, I want to know. Yeah, sure. Tell me. Cool, man. Let me get two seconds of information, right? How many miles are on it now? What kind of condition is it in? And then, hey, let me ask you a question. If it was a crazy number and it was awesome, what do you think you'd upgrade to? 
Like, like just asking, like hypothetically, what would it be? I don't know. It'd probably be a truck. It'd probably be a newer model with less miles. Okay, cool. Let me talk to my boss about your car and I'll call you back. Now, guess what? Now you've got somebody who is cold, who's now warm. Guess what? They're not hot yet, but if you do your job, they will be hot. And I'll tell you this, you can close 50% of those people that will actually say, yes, I would like to know how much equity I have. And, and watch this. Hey, hey, Paul, would you like to know how much equity you have in your car? Dan down here at Subaru Cal Calgary. I don't care if you buy anything, but right now we're giving crazy money because the auctions are shut down, so we can't go buy anything. So we're going back to our previous customers, VIP people like you. I want to ask you, would you mind if I told you how much equity you have in your car? Would you mind if I told you? What's Paul going to say? No, I don't want to know. Now he's going to say, yeah, you know what? Go ahead and tell me. All right, cool, man. I just need to ask a couple questions and I can get you that information. Now we've started a dialogue. It's like a bank account. You can't withdraw money out of the bank if you don't deposit anything in the bank. You know, deposit, withdraw, deposit, withdraw. And then guess what? Now we've got a transaction relationship happening and the customers actually have made this their decision to opt in to their buying. Okay. And then I asked a hypothetical question. I say, well, hey, hypothetically, uh, let's say it was a really neat number and you were impressed. Um, what would you be interested in upgrading with? What, what would it be? And I just asked a question. He said, well, I don't care what you say. I wouldn't buy anything. Cool. Let me still get you your equity appraisal and I'll call you right back then. At the end of the day, that's not what matters. I want to let you know. But the fact is, is that if they want to know, they want to know for a reason. And that right there might just be a little itch that starts their mind turning. Guess what? Now when you call them back, you're like, gosh, man, this is amazing. You know what? And by the way, I was going to tell you, you actually have a newer model out of the car you own. And there's some specials on it I want to tell you about while I'm with you on the phone. And I put together a hypothetical proposal of what it would look like. You know, you'd be making the same payment almost. And all of a sudden, it's like people will move and shift. Look, the power of persuasion is insane. You guys can influence and persuade anybody, but you just have to set yourself up for the right ammunition. So, um, Paul, I'm um, prospecting. I'd call 50 people a day. I love, I love cold calling, but I'm going to tell you, guys, why not hit warm leads? A warm lead is somebody that's already done business with you before. And guess what? Like I said, find an equity mining list. Okay, which would be people have equity. It would be a high interest list, people that maybe paid a little higher rate because they didn't have perfect credit. Okay, and you're actually calling them back. And who wouldn't love a great phone call to say, hey, I could try hopefully to cut your rate in half. I just did it with another lady the other day. And people are like, yeah, yeah, I'll do that. Um, these are things right here that are huge. Uh, referrals. Listen, one of our biggest questions that people are saying with us right now is like, hey, um, you know, can you defer my car payment? Well, I don't know if we can defer it, but I know we can make it for you, right? Know anybody looking for a vehicle right now that's in, that's in major need of it? What's your payment? Three thirty-five a month? I don't know. What do you guys pay on referrals? Uh, you guys, like hundred, two hundred. Depends on the store. Hundred, two hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so you say, hey, watch it. So I'm calling. I'm like, hey, Paul, what's up? This is Andy down here. You know, at Super Calgary. Just want to say hi. Everybody doing okay? Yeah, everybody's great. Awesome. All right, cool, man. Hey, the reason why I was reaching out to you, look, and I know you're busy, so I'm going to make this really quick, okay? Is that cool with you? Can I just move fast here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're not going to tell you no. They're going to be like, hell yeah, you can make this fast. And then guess what? You say, hey, listen, we've been paying out over, I don't know, say over $5,000 in referrals um, over the last week. It's insane. The payout is huge. So I'm calling all my customers to let them know that we've had a common question being asked to us. Customers are calling us and saying, hey, can you defer my payment because of the coronavirus? And we're like, no, we can't, we, we can't, we can't defer your payment. We're just a dealership. What we can do is we can actually help participate in helping you make your payment. Well, how do you do that? It's easy. You just send me a referral. And guess what? Right now there's people that maybe have a car that's too expensive that they can't afford anymore. Maybe somebody, you know, that's like, Hey, I'm broke. I, and I, and that this has really put me in the hole. Guess what? They could trade that car in, not have a payment for a couple months and I can fix that problem. Okay. And all I'm asking is, would you mind giving me their name and phone number? And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll contact them, whatever. But guess what, Paul, I'd love to pay you. And I'd love to be a part of helping you financially with anything that you need. We're not only here for vehicle needs, we're here for all different types of needs. Do you have any questions about what I asked you, what I just told you about? Do you have any concerns, questions, anything from me? All I'm, all I'm doing is reaching out, but we've been paying the, the payout's been so big that I think you'd love it. Listen, that's asking for referrals. We got equity mining. We got high interest rates. 
And then on top of that, you just got the cold call videos that you guys are shooting out video, you're calling people, you're telling them they're, they're important to you, just want to check on them. Hey, people love being checked on. Hey, I, I'm just checking on you. Yeah, what do you, what do you need? We're just, I'm just checking on you. You good? Okay, cool, man. Hey, we're just checking on our people because we love them. We love you. Don't forget it, okay? Anything I can do for you before we get off the phone? Nope. All right. Have a great, have a great day. Hopefully we'll see you soon. Hey, it's okay. Just make a phone call. You never know if you ask it. Hey, listen, we're just, we're just saying hi. You know, people will start opening up and they see that there's no motive. You know, so I was just going to say there's warm leads, there's cold leads, but bottom line is, I, like in the beginning, I said the first sale that you ever make will be making the sale that you're going to sell the next person that you talk to. That's it. So it's all here. It's all here. It's all in your believability. What you tell yourself is going to happen is what's going to happen. End of story. I love it. I love it. Okay, Kyle, you had a question? Yeah, Andy, with, with the world we're living in, with the virtual world, uh, people are looking on the internet left, right, and center. Um, being able to show your charisma through an email is not the easiest thing. How do you, uh, you know, how do you get people to engage with you uh, after they make that initial contact with the dealership through an e-lead? Okay, so you're talking about sending out emails. Yeah. Okay, let me ask you a question. Can you attach? Can you attach? Can you attach a picture with your emails? Yes or no? Yep. Yeah. And video. You can put a video in your email. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you asked me, how can I send an email, right? And guess what? I would send an email before you were like, I saw you inquired about this car. Here's the information on it. I hope that you know you like it. If you have any questions, look, they, they didn't even read past the third sentence. They're done. Am I right? The way emails work, you have three sentences and you're done. Just, just three. One, two, three. If you haven't said what you want to say, do me a favor. Send three emails. It doesn't matter. But if you make more than three sentences, they're not going to read it. So I would tell you, this is my goal with you guys. Put the video. If you have video, listen, Kyle, are, are, is, is videoing yourself something that you're used to doing? Probably not, right? Well, yeah, actually, it's something I do pretty regularly. <laughs> then get, your, get your butt on the video. Be like, hey, 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 this is Kyle down here at Super Calgary. Look, I saw that you were checking on the vehicle. I want to tell you, I just put my hands on it. I want to tell you all about it. Listen, my cell phone, 918 210 0254. You're going to be blown away. And by the way, when you call me, I got something for you. It's a surprise. Okay. Remember that. Whether, whether you want the vehicle or not, I've got something for you. We're giving it away to our customers, but I'm going to save it for the phone call. Guess what? Hell, give me a keychain. I don't care. Guess what? Give them a piece of paper, draw a heart on it. Doesn't matter. And guess what? <laughs> At the end of the day, make it enticing. People, they, 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 they want it. They're, they're very curious, right? Curiosity kills a cat. They want to know, you know, something. If you, that's why websites give all the information. So if you're getting a lead, that's a great lead. Most people only convert 2% on a website, okay, to, to sending a lead because they can bounce off websites like crazy. So guess what? When you're getting a lead, dude, people are like, these leads are weak. I'm like, dude, you're freaking weak. What do you mean? This person put their real information in you? Are you kidding me? And you say, well, the phone number wasn't real. Was the email fake? No, email was real. Guess what? Learn how to be great at email. So the deal is, I would put a picture of you, right? Okay, watch this. See this piece of paper? I write on here, I have something I want to give you for free. And look, I sent a picture of me doing this. And they're like, what the heck? They read what I have on this piece of paper. They don't even care what the email says. Guess what it says to you on this piece of paper? Text me real fast. I got something for you. People won't call you, but they'll text you for sure. Okay? Just get them to engage with you. Okay? But, but so you asked, how do you show charisma through an email? Well, the only way you can do it is a great subject header. Okay? But definitely by, uh, you know, doing a video. And, then, and by the way, your subject headers, if, if they're not great, um, nobody's going to open your email. Okay? So I would, I would use things like your check is ready. People are like, my check's ready. What check? Open the email. I just, I, I got it. I mean, I'm just telling you, you got to be innovative. Okay. If you, if you say uh, Kyle from Subaru Calgary, they're like, Kyle, 
what I'm saying? But if Kyle's like, hey, your check's ready. You're like, what check? Right? The check right here that when you buy a vehicle, right? We could we could cut you back a little money um, for a vehicle if you wanted to because of the great discounts. That check. I can explain that in person. I can explain that over the phone. I don't have to explain it because I can give, you can give checks back to anybody. Guess what? If they buy something, they can get a check. Okay? I'm going to check for 100 bucks. We'll, we'll put it on the deal. What, are, what, what do you want? My point is just be innovative. You know what I'm saying? You got to think outside the box and you got to realize that so many people have been in this business and they're not giving their best right now. And that's a good thing for you guys. That's a great thing. And the reason when I said this is the era of the work salesman I've ever seen in my life, that's a good thing for you guys. Dude, Paul, how long have you been selling? 11, we'll call it 11 years. I mean, I, I don't know what it was like when you started because we're in two different countries and I, I wasn't there with you. But when I started, when I was 20 years ago, dude, it was a fist fight trying to get enough. These guys were brutal, man. I mean, dude, I mean, like literally, like it was a fight trying to get in front of these guys. Now I fly out every week and I'm in dealerships and I see people like, oh, you, 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 you know, you go get that one. You, you can have that one. I'm like, what? You can have that one. When you kissed your kids and your wife goodbye this morning and you left the house to come to work, did you leave them for that, for that attitude, for that work ethic? No ways, man. You're complaining about working too many hours. You don't even work the hours you're here. You don't have to work more hours. If you were a better salesman, you could design your own life. Paul, if you were my boss and you're like, hey, Andy, you got to work 50 hours a week. I'm like, all right, cool, Paul. Let me ask you this. If I sold three times as many cars as Kyle over here, would you mind if I worked 30? You're like, yeah, yeah, I guess, you know, I really don't care now. All right, cool, dude. <laughs> Hey, all I'm saying is great salespeople have the ability to design their own life. Okay. It's called the one percenter. But if you're not trying to become a one percenter by default, you're automatically going to fall into what the other 99 percent are doing. Look, right now, Kyle, we're in the worst era of salespeople we've ever seen. Guess what? Go beat the crap out of them. Okay. The beautiful thing for you, every single person in every single dealership, it's seeing these crappy salespeople. And when they see you, they're going to be freaking blown away. They're not even going to know what to think. But guess what? The one thing that we do in this business is we never stop acting. Never. I don't care how you are when you go home. I don't care if you mow your lawn in a Speedo. Guess what? When you come to work, guess what? You're an actor, bro. It's like Brad Pitt. When he goes to work, I'm pretty sure that like they give him a script. And he's like, hey, you need to, you need to act like this. He's like, all right. All right, cool. I got it. I'm ready. And they pay him like all this money because he's an actor. But when he goes home, dude, he ain't that way. You got to flip the switch. If you guys are going home the same person as you come to work, man, you're not playing your best. You got to elevate your game when you're at work. Your wife or one of your friends should show up to work and be like, who in the hell is that? What is he doing? I've never seen Kyle act that way at home. Yeah, you know what? You'd be earning 10 times the money, okay? And guess what? You deserve it. You'd have more fun doing it, okay? Give all you got. Don't leave anything on the table, okay? When I go home, this is straight up. I got three kids, my wife. Man, we're running around, guys. I mean, I, I, so I, I never wear a shirt. I never wear shoes. And you wouldn't know that by seeing me, but I'm just telling you, when I go home, I... I, I'm like a kid. I run around with my kids. We play, fight, we run around, we do all this. When I go to work I, and, I, and I put my suit on, I put my clothes on, I mean, I get in like freaking lion hunt mode. I'm ready to go. And by the way, I mean, I'm going to run over anybody in my way, very lovingly, okay? But I just, I refuse to not be successful, okay? Now, by the way, you guys can all team up together and push each other, and you need to. And you guys, there's some of you in the store that need to be helping someone else in the store, okay? It doesn't cost you anything to give an extra five or 10 minutes, but guess what? Be an example for someone else. The best way to show someone else that there's another, another level to play at is to play it yourself. Going around doing this talk, that's cheap. You don't want that. I'm so sick of talkers. We need action, but you've got to decide to make it a new lifestyle. The old you is gone and the new you is here. So it doesn't matter where you are, it, it matters who you're becoming. So Kyle could literally change his entire life. And I'm using him because he's like, man, I'm right here on the front line. It's like in a conference room. The guy that sits closest to me, he gets smashed. You know what I'm saying? But if you run and hide in the back, I'll smash you too. I'm, I'm always looking for somebody trying to nug me. 
And I want to tell you, it's because it's not the value that I have. Like Paul, it doesn't matter how much skill you have. It matters how much skill that you can add to the guys' lives that are around you. That's the bottom line. And I'm going to tell you, like Paul, if these guys don't become 10 times better than you, you're not doing your job. And I mean it. Kyle has to be able to close deals you can't close. And when that happens, everybody makes so much money. It's insane. I, I, I took over a dealership. It was, it was a Kia store and they were selling 150 Kias a month. And when I went in, I knew I was going to take the store to uh, 450, 500, 600 cars. Dude, nobody was thinking that way. I mean, I couldn't even have had that conversation with somebody because they wouldn't have believed me. And by the way, the owner, the first day I walked in, you know what he told me? He said, fire every one of those guys. They're worthless. Fire them. They are worthless. You know what I did? I had a meeting with them, okay? Watch this. And I said, hey, listen, all of you guys, I got you. I got you. We're going to start training every day. And I'm going to tell you, when we started training, they were yawning. They were getting broken. They were in a suck zone they had never been in. After two weeks, guess what? These guys were selling 15 cars a month that used to sell 10. Because they were able in front of customers to be able to handle objections they couldn't handle. They were actually making a best friend right off the lot. Her management actually loved them because leadership starts at the top. And guess what happens? Within three months, we took the store to average in 350. Long story short, I was a GM there for six months. We averaged 450 cars a month average. Our biggest month was 606 after rollbacks. It was too many cards. It's too much work. You know what I'm saying? But 450 is a magic number. But this store was selling 150 when I took it over. The owner went from making a million a year to 13 million a year. And all my guys were all making 15,000 a month minimum. Guess what? I had some guys making 40, 50 grand. They were so happy. These guys never thought that they could make that kind of money. But how I did it, Paul, is that I did it by making them better than me. These guys were better than me. I wanted them to be better. I told them. I said, dude, you guys all take my job. They don't want my job. Though. You know what they wanted? They wanted the brotherhood, the sisterhood. I had girls, guys, I had everybody. But my deal is I wanted them to, 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 when they come to work, to give all that they have. Any negativity in my store, we'd throw you out. Doesn't matter. I'm not going to listen to it. We don't breed negativity here. And I'm not telling you guys to switch your store 360, but I do want to share that with you. That I'm going to tell you, there's somebody in your store right now that could be a beast. I mean, like you've never seen, but they have to start training and everybody has to buy in together, but it definitely all starts at the top. And obviously, Paul, you reaching out to me is awesome because I, I right now I'm currently training, um, you know, 30 to 40,000 salespeople. I'm in about 150 dealers that salespeople reach out to me nonstop. And then I have owners reach in for me to go train their stores. And when I do, most of the time when I go in, the managers are, I don't know, offended a little bit that someone else is here. They, they don't like it. I'm like, bro, I'm, I'm just trying to help your, you and your team. I mean, that's it. And I show them love. But I just want to tell you, as you push in your team, you guys have an awesome leader. I'm just going to say this, by the way, with Paul. And I know you guys have tons of groups. But I'm going to tell you something, man. That's special. That's magic. You don't find that everywhere. So I'm really proud of you, Paul. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate it. Um, obviously not as successful as you yet, but we'll get there. Um, no, I think we have one more question. Let's, let's, ha let's have it for Red Deer. Uh, I don't want to take up all of Andy's uh, valuable time. So, uh, Mike, if you can choose a, somebody in Red Deer for a question. What's your question, Tom? Yeah, so Tom, Tom's asking the question about the still shopping objection. You, you, uh, you touched on it earlier uh, at, the start of the, at the start of the call. Um, he just kind of want, he would like you to elaborate a little bit more on that still shopping objection. Okay, so I got, I got, okay, so you're saying a guy pulls up and he's like, like, this is my first stop, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just going to keep yeah. looking, right? Yeah. Well, number one, uh, I would start out if, if it was in the beginning, guy walks up, says, hey, it's my first stop. I'd say, hey, whether it's your first stop or your last stop, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to serve you. Okay. That right there kills it. And I'd say, and I'd follow it up by saying, uh, number one, so listen, so whether this is my first, whether, so Paul, whether this is your first stop or your last stop, I'm just grateful to have the opportunity to serve you. Okay. That right there hits you right in the mouth. 
And then I would say, but I would like to share with you, we are high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family, as far as trade-ins, price, payments. So if you find something you love, I'll make sure I'll take care of all that for you, okay? Let's see if we find something you like. Now, at the end of the day, now it's on you. Now you go and you try to help them. And if somebody says that they're still shopping, I'm going to tell you why they're still shopping. They're still shopping because they haven't been sold yet. And I'm going to tell you this. If you do your job right, there is no still shopping. Buying at the right place isn't something you say. It's a feeling that you have. Okay? Everybody knows when they're in the right place to purchase something. It's a feeling that you get. Can you give your customers that feeling? If you want to know how to give them that feeling, it's by multiple things. One, it's by the words that you say, and it's by using those words at the right time. Two, it's about the tonality of the words that you use while you're saying them. Look, if you guys are sitting here with me, my voice will go up and then it will go back down. And I will constantly use the tonality of my voice. Also, you see these hands? These are magic weapons, all right? As I'm talking to you, I will push the way that I feel through into you. I don't care how you feel when you pull up. I care about how you feel 10 minutes after I've met you. You have the ability to change someone's state. But in order to do that, you have to be in a beautiful state. You have to be happy with who you are. You have to be sold that you're going to sell the next customer that you talk to. By the way, look at my face. Do you think you're not going to get sold? Hell yeah, you're going to get sold. Okay? And the customers know it. I believe more that they're going to buy than they believe that they're not going to buy. Therefore, I will sell them. They're not going anywhere. They know they're not going anywhere. And they're okay with that. Why? Because they have that feeling inside that I'm the right dude to do business with. If somebody tells you that they want to continue shopping, I'm going to tell you this, you haven't done your job. And I hate to put all the, the, the accountability on you because I know some of you guys right now want to blame it on something else. And you may say, Andy, I don't like the way you're talking to me. But I'm going to tell you this. Take accountability for everything that happens in your life, good or bad. Take accountability for it. And it's called ownership. Take extreme ownership of everything that happens. If you don't sell a customer, guess what? Instead of saying that they were just shopping and they're not ready, how about, how about you say this? I wouldn't be good enough to sell them. That's it. Just be honest with yourself. Because you can fix that. But when you pass the blame, you give away the ability to fix that. Am I right or wrong? Oh, yeah, you're, you're definitely right. And I think what I think what Tom wanted to know is uh, – is what would you personally say? A customer says, you know what, Andy, you've been great. We love the car. Uh, we still got to go drive the Mazda. Awesome. Hey, and, and, and Paul, I appreciate you saying that. And actually, I hear that all the time. Um, so 90% of my customers, when they say they want to go drive a Mazda, what I actually hear from them is that they are sold on this vehicle, but they just have a little bit more curiosity to what the other vehicle looks like. But I'm going to tell you this. One thing that we've learned about 2020, because that's the year that we're in, the average consumer three years ago would visit 4.3 dealerships before making a purchasing decision. In today's times, they're visiting one. The fact that you're here, you've already made up the mind inside that you wanted to where you wouldn't have come here first, right? What I would like to ask you is this, Paul, would you mind if I showed you a five minute proposal of all the figures? I know you love the car. Look, your time's valuable to you. I don't know how much money you make an hour, Paul, but I can just guess if you made a hundred in an hour, you've been here three hours, you spent uh, 300 bucks with me. You've probably been on the internet for a few hours, right? You did in your head, most of your shopping before you got here. I already know that. And um, you know, NADA statistics said that you already know where you want, but because we're creatures of habit, Paul, in the past, you probably had to go visit multiple dealerships before you purchase something. You don't have to do that anymore. You can break old bad habits. And that's why we watch the stats and the statistics that so much of this information is done now on the internet that when you come in, look, Paul, I'm here, you're here, the car's here. Paul, it's probably not a matter of if you're going to buy, right, Paul? But when, and the win's probably when the deal's right, right? Would you agree? Yeah, and then guess correct. what? Paul would say, yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably right. It's when the deal's right. I'll say, cool, Paul. Hey, what I'd like to do is show you a five minute proposal of all the figures and let's take a look at it and uh, we'll go from there. Is that fair? And I use the word fair, fair, fair. And what I'm doing is I'm advancing the sell forward and then I'll take them and put them on paper. And then I, I would just share this with you. 
anytime that somebody says that like, you know, they've got more chopping to do, I'm going to tell you this, always let them know, Hey, listen guys, I got it. You know, look, I, I do the same thing. Um, so I haven't bought a refrigerator in five years and I went and bought one the other day. The last time me and my wife bought a refrigerator, we visited three refrigerator places before we bought one. Uh, that was normal. Now we went straight in, bought it the first time. And it was a little weird to me. I told my wife, I said, do we need to go look at a couple more? She said, honey, we did all our research on the internet before we came in. I said, that makes sense. Yes, you know what? Our time's valuable. We'll take the refrigerator. You know what? All the work is done already on the internet, guys. It's already done. So you can rest in peace that you haven't driven that Mazda. You haven't seen it because you didn't want to see it. You wanted to see the Subaru first. That's it. Whatever it is, tell people how to think. Listen, I want to ask a question, okay? Can you change your customer's thinking? Yes or no? The answer is absolutely you can. And I want to share this with you. You see these arms? If I can put my arms around you and I can touch you, okay, I can sell you. That's it. So I hope that that helps. And I wish that I was there in your dealership and there was a customer that was in front of you that said, hey, we, we need to go shop and drive a Mazda. I would shut him down in person. And you could probably see that I would might handle it even three different ways, three different times. But the fact is I have it tattooed on my heart and I'm prepared to handle it every time. And I'm confident that I wouldn't let that customer get away. And by the way, I am not a high pressure salesman. I'm very low pressure, okay? But if you're not applying pressure, if you are not applying pressure, you are never going to sell a lot of cars. Very low pressure, but continue through the entire sale. It's so low that it can't even be detected. The entire time that I'm talking to you guys right now, I am pressuring you guys in to investing in yourself and training more. Does anybody feel the pressure from me? No. You know why? Because it's very low, but it's continual. My goal is when we get off this phone call that you guys will actually say, you know what? I'm going to start training for 30 minutes a day. You know, I'm going to start investing in myself. I'm going to start pushing myself. And look, and, and I'll tell everybody this. I, I have a Facebook group uh, that there's so much motivation in it. It's, it's, it's called Andy Elliott Car Sales Nation. Um, we don't sell stuff in there and all that. What we do is we have salespeople that like post their pay stubs. They post like how they're doing. Um, a guy like has an objection. Like, hey, I just had an objection. The guy said, I want to think about it. Uh, he left on me. Dude, I had a girl yesterday that was literally sitting on an $8,000 deal and she posted in the group, I'm about to take this pencil out. I'm scared to death. It's an $8,000 deal. I'm nervous. And we had all these salespeople start saying, hey, what's your objection? What do you have trouble with? And all this. They literally walked her through how to overcome it. And guess what? It was the most beautiful thing. At the end, she texts, hey, I just sold my customer. She had a picture of them. And she said, without the group, I wouldn't be able to do it. I want to tell you, just do me a favor. Plug in. Plug in like Paul. Paul says, anytime you come in my office, I'm watching Andy Elliott car sales training on YouTube. Here's what I'll tell you. Paul's plugging in, okay? You have to plug into something that pushes you. Look, sitting in front of the media right now watching the coronavirus, that's the first way to kill yourself. You're not going to die from the coronavirus. You're going to die from freaking the media, okay? I'm just telling you, plug into positive stuff, okay? I have a few people that I plug into every day. I plug into Tony Robbins because I love mindset motivation. Um, David Goggins, I, I plug into him. He's very hardcore. He just talks about like, hey, like doing hard things is what's going to get you ahead in life. So do the stuff that sucks, okay? Do the stuff that no one else do. Like he's out there running like in 110 degree weather. This guy pulls over. He's like, why are you out here? He's like, because you're not. You know, I'm like, yes. You know, bust him in the mouth. You know, be the one percenter, man. You, you, you guys all deserve your best life right now. So anyways, um, Paul, what do you think? Are you guys good? You need anything? Hey, and by the way, look, huh? Yeah, yeah. Go to Car Sales Nation and join the group. Uh, Paul, you, you can have your guys do it. Um, I'm just saying, like, just join the group and, you know, anybody can post in there. We'll stay connected. But anything you need, period, um, I got you. Yeah, I know you can call our part of it. Yeah. Um, so I found out the issue with the Objections app. Uh, it's only an iPhone app right now. Yeah, so Android is being released, yeah. It's, when's Android being released? One month from now. It's, okay. it's it, so the every, app, go ahead. So everybody like Red Deer guys, uh, Edmonton guys, guys here, everybody knows, knows for Apple products. Um, today, okay, 
I'm going out and purchasing an iPhone strictly to use Andy's app. That's how much I believe in it. That's my okay. boy right there. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Okay. Hey, listen. Hey, Paul, can I, can I say something real quick? And listen, I'm not cutting you off. I want you to finish, but I want to tell you this. I have a guy here who's from Florida that, that he just flew in from San Jose, California. He's going back home tomorrow, but he came in for a master closer seminar we're having here. And um, anyways, long story short, I let him, he doesn't have an iPhone, he has an Android. And I gave him my phone, right? I gave it to him and I said, hey, here, I want you to role play on my app for 10 minutes. Here's the funny thing. He wouldn't get off it. He was freaking hooked. And I said, come on, man, give my phone back. I need it. Guess what? Today, this morning, I, he, at last night, he asked me, he's like, can I borrow your phone again? He's like, I want to I play on your app. This morning, I walk into him. He's like, look, dude, I just switched my phone company. I get an iPhone. He said, that app's going to change my life. And I mean it, it will. I, just, I wish I had it when I was a kid, man. So anyways, go ahead. But I just want to tell you that, dude, get the tools that you need. And you can role play at any time for hours or for 10 minutes. It's a, it's a really, really cool app. So. Like I said, today I'm going out and I'm buying an iPhone, investing in the iPhone because that's how much I believe in it. Okay. I, I use Andy's verbiage, his closing techniques all the time. Some of you are like, oh, it's cheesy. Paul says it all the time. We practice it because I, I practice it all the time. So best thing you can do instead of going on YouTube and watching uh, sovereign citizens upset customer videos or, or girls shaking their butts, watch this guy. Okay? Hey, I'll Every shake morning. my butt. Just kidding. <laughs> 20 bucks is 20 bucks, right? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but dude. It, it's jacked up. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 I'm saying there's 300 free sales training videos on YouTube. Um, there's lots of killer courses that I put out that are great. It, it's up to you whether you want to self invest in yourself. You don't have to. YouTube videos are free. Everything in life is literally there for you um, to take. Okay? You're in the most beautiful business in the world. You guys sound like you have an amazing company, man. Um, dude, kill it, man. Every time I talk to you guys, and by the way, Hey, like Paul has my number, 918-210-0254. Look, Kyle can send me a text. Look, Andy, I'm struggling with this. Look, dude, I'll always respond. Even if I'm in training, when I get out, I will. I mean, I will always help you guys. I don't need money. What I need for you guys is to kill it. That's what I need. I want every single one of you guys to have your best life right now. And, um, especially Paul reaching out, like anything I could do for your team, let me know. Um, yeah, I got you. Awesome. Awesome. Now that doesn't mean bombard him and ask for free shit. So, um, Andy, hey. we really appreciate it, man. Um, I'm gonna, I'll text you later on in the day. Once I get that, that, uh, iPhone thing going, I can't believe I'm even saying I'm going to an iPhone. I feel, I feel like I'm sh cheating on my, my lady. I, I don't know. Hey, here's what I'm going to tell you. Crazy, crazy times, guys. Hey, everything you want in life is right on the other side of being uncomfortable. And I'm going to tell you this, okay? You may think that going to an iPhone is silly, but the fact is that you're doing things you normally once didn't do means that you're going to deeper waters. You're playing with, it, with bigger fish. I'm going to tell you something. One of the beautiful things is, Paul, you're, you're not a second-rated version of me. You're a first-rated version of yourself. When you train with me, Paul may take an objection that he's learning in the role play app and he may only use 60% of it for himself and pull in his own 40%. So as you learn it and you memorize how I say it, you memorize how I say it. So you memorize something. Guess what? Whenever you go to use it, you're going to start doing this with these objections. It's going to be nuts. You're going to have so many word tracks on your heart. And it's like when people say something, your words come out and they're so strong. Like, just think about this. Instead of saying, hey, we're great at business. I'm like, hey, listen, Mr. Customer, Paul, we're great. And, and we're high in all the critical areas that are important to you and your family, okay? Because you're important and you matter. Look, instead of saying great, I replaced it with that. And it sounds better. And I know that they haven't heard that from another salesperson before. That's just one of, uh, of hundreds of word tracks. But when you start talking that way, all you have to do sometimes is say something one just one thing that resonates with them that gives them the call to action that says, man, it's the right place. We're doing this. It feels right. So um, anyways, I appreciate you, dude. You guys are amazing. Anybody needs anything. Um, I sent Paul the link to the app. Paul, you can share it with them. Um, but like I said, uh, the elliotgroupnow.com is my website, but Paul uh, has my cell phone. You guys have my cell phone. Dude, anything you need, reach out. I got you guys. We're a brotherhood. Girl, do you have girls that work in your store? Is there any sales um, girls? We, we did. 
we did and uh, she might be coming back just with this whole COVID thing right now sure. it's not like we're not we're not like the big you know you, you were saying 500 600 cars cars a month um uh, we're not as populated in canada like where we were like 200 is our goal combined sure. and use um yeah two, two. yeah but 200 is great though and, and everything is based off population but what i will tell you everybody in your store has the ability to sell 10 more cars a piece they have it in them and the deal is, it's not always about getting more customers. Sometimes it's about increasing your closing ratio. Hey, Paul, we, we grew up and what was the talk? 30% closing ratio. Hey, I'm yeah. going to tell you, this may scare you and you may call me a liar. I closed at 70% when I was a salesman. But I'm going to tell you right now, you guys have the same potential as me. Like I said, I asked Kyle, do you, have, do you believe you have the potential to make more money? He says, yes. I said, why aren't you? That why needs to get you pissed off and you need to take action when we get off this phone. And by the way, don't just get motivated for one day, change your entire life. So anything you need from me, reach out. Um, guys, go to Andy Elliott Car Sales Nation, join me, for real, on the daily. Yeah. yeah, 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 DM us, whatever you need, we got you, okay? So love you guys, man. We're all brotherhood. I appreciate you guys. Awesome, Thanks, Andy. Andy. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Andy. Yeah, I appreciate Thanks. you guys. Okay, Thanks, have a great day. Appreciate it. Thank you guys, see you guys.